Uh, okay, now we're good. Okay, we will call the regular meeting of February 2nd, 2021 to order. We have the flag for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag the of, the of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, stands one, nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Roll call, please. John Douglas. Here. Michael Howry. Here. Michelle Hayes. Here. Brian Horvath. Here. Jean Sensi. Here. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? I move. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call. Sean Douglas? Yes. Michael Howry? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Brian Horvath? Yes. Jean Sensi? Yes. Vote is 5 0. Are there any board member reports for tonight? All right, seeing none, we will open the public participation portion on agenda items only. Anyone wishing to address the board on agenda items would have five minutes to do so. If you could state your name and address for the board, please. Give me one sec. Okay, everybody is given the opportunity to unmute themselves. Joe, you've unmuted yourself. Oh, what are the agenda uh, 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 items? I'm sorry. Was the question, what are the agenda items? Yeah, what what, what is on the agenda? I, I have no no record of that. Okay, we have a number of items on the agenda. We have a levy resolution on the agenda. We have a number of items from the superintendent as far as accepting retirement resignations, uh, employment contracts. I mean, there's quite a bit on the agenda. Okay, I would like to address the uh... The uh, uh, the uh, impending uh, uh, thing about getting levy. the levy. Okay, go ahead. Uh, now I remember I was at a meeting quite a while back, and I and I brought up the question of, or we're going to have a a, a, a levy uh, increase here, and it was no, 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 no. We're not going to have any kind of an increase, and now now you want an increase. Why are you going to have? Why do you want this increase? All right, well, right after the public participation portion, we're gonna have a presentation with the treasurer specifically on the levy resolution. Um, I would suggest that, you know, we're gonna have a motion, uh, presumably a second, and then there'll be discussion in which the um, treasurer will discuss the levy resolution uh, in depth. So do you think that's something that you could wait and hear that presentation? And then there's certainly comments afterwards. Is that something you could wait to do, Joe? Are you comfortable with that? <clears throat> well, okay, but I wanna know that I'm, I'm, I'm really against this levy thing here, but okay, I'll wait until I get my comments later. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to address the board on any um, agenda items? There I am. All right, seeing none, uh, we now have a levy resolution on the board for a 6.99 property tax levy. Um, 
resolution determining to proceed to levy an additional tax for current operating expenses in excess of the 10 mil limitation. Do we have a motion for that levy? I'll move. A second. All right, so moving into discussion, Mike, could you talk about this levy, please? Sure, give me one sec to get to it. Um, okay, so in, in September of 2020, uh, we presented a forecast, the five-year forecast, which we're required to do by law, and it had a projecting ending balance for this year of $43,000 and a projected ending balance next year of 2 million. Um, we've talked about what causes that and how in the future that ending balance just gets bigger because our revenue is flatlined or actually decreasing for a couple of the years and our expenses um, go up at a, at a rate at least equal to inflation. So- Wait, Now next year was, next year's not 2 million ending balance. I'll get there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm heading with this. Okay. Um, so back in January, a, a month ago, we talked about what might change because there were some significant items coming down the pike from the state that we had no knowledge of until very late in December. So clearly well after the forecast was, was filed. Um, we talked about the additional money coming from the, from the state, the ESSER funds, E-S-S-E-R you know, we didn't, in January, we didn't know how much it was. Last year we received 353,000. We were told it could be uh, four times the amount. Uh, it could be up to $1.4 million. And at that point we said we'd know by the end of January. Well, uh, last week we found out what we were getting. Our allocation is a, a tick over 1.4 million. Um, we do need to use some of that money for uh, summer intervention to catch our students up to where they need to be based on the fact that they, some of them wouldn't, won't have been in a classroom for a year and a half. Um, and another good piece of news, which we also found out last week, which again, no knowledge that it was coming. Um, the state, back in May, they cut us a half million dollars for last fiscal year, and they continued that half million dollar cut this fiscal year. Well, they restored a part of that cut um, last week. And we'll start receiving that uh, late February through the end of June. So 1.4 million coming in, a $1.3 million increase in revenue, which actually becomes a decrease in expenses, one time only this year. Reduction in the state cut increases our revenue one time only this year. Uh, after we did the forecast, we received an additional workers' compensation refund. Um, again, that's that's additional increase in revenue one time this year. And then we have a couple of other items that, based on our October counts, which started rolling in to be confirmed in November and December, our open enrollment revenue is a little bit lower by about 101,000. That is a decrease in revenue every year. So the effect on the five-year forecast there is a half a million dollars reduction in revenue. We also had higher community school deductions, meaning kids that are leaving our district going to community schools, that's actually um, about $110,000 higher than the forecast. So that effect is about 550,000. So while we got in seven, almost $2 million in revenue, we've lost this year 200,000 in decreases in revenue and expenses. And while we got 2 million in for one time, we're losing a million over the five years of the forecast. So while we got a chunk in this year, it really didn't have as big of impact on the overall forecast as one might expect. So, and we talked about this in January and, and we still don't know for sure what's going to happen. Although with the governor's budget, sheds a little more light on the fact that student success and wellness funds could be continued and actually could be continued at a higher rate, but that's the governor's budget. That's not the House's version. That's not the Senate's version. So that is still unknown. Um, that allows us to redirect some of our general fund expenditures. 
that's the general fund is the one shown in the five-year forecast to this other fund and relieve the general fund of some of those expenses. So let's go back to September, the five-year forecast. You know, there's the ending balances. The final year of the forecast is 2025. And our ending balance at that time was forecast to be $13 million in the hole. Um, so I now have factored in those items from here into the five-year forecast, just changed it for those items. And that's how the ending balance changes. Um, you know, we have a healthy balance at the end of this year, which this year, next year, it's kind of a moving target when we're going to be allowed to spend those ESSER funds. So if we can't spend them all this year, then our ending balance this year's goes a little lower. But by the end of next year, the ending balance is still over a half million dollars in the hole. And as you can see, we are still $12 million in the hole at the end of five years. Yeah, I, you know, I wonder when you do these, when you put these numbers out, and I know that you put them in parentheses, but for some people, maybe if you just put a negative in front of that, that would make them actually okay. see that that's a negative amount. I can do that. Um, so the board had talked about different types of levies, different amounts. And, you know, at the last meeting, they, you voted on the resolution of necessity for a 6.99 mill levy. Um, it would be, if it was passed in 2000 calendar year, 2021, it would first collect in calendar year 2022, which is the second half of fiscal year 2022. So next fiscal year, starting July 1st of 2021, ending June 30th of 2022, we would have half a year of collections for that tax levy, almost $1.4 million. And then every fiscal year after that, we would have a full 12 months of collections, 2,782,000 and change. So what does that revenue do to our ending balances? Um, this year it has no change because we wouldn't collect any this fiscal year. Next year it takes it from a negative 500 and some thousand to a positive 868,000. Two years out, we're not, we have a $603,000 positive balance and then we start going negative again. And the balance at the end of the forecast is still negative by almost $2.4 million. So in order to balance, even with a 6.99 mil levy, we are still gonna have to have cuts in order to continue to balance. Keep in mind, this has no raises built in for any of the staff for any of the five years. Nobody got one coming into this year. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but it has no raises built in. Um, and then finally, uh, this is important because of the Gazette article, which I sent the board yesterday. Um, the, the numbers were a little, I don't want to say incorrect because it was $100,000 of valuation, but it was tax value, not market value. The cost for $100,000 of market value, basically your market value is, what's your house worth? The cost per year is $244.65. The way that's calculated is you take your market value. You multiply it times 34, 35%, that gets you your taxable value. Then the tax rate is 0 0.00699, gets you $244.65 per month. If your house is worth 150,000, you take that number and you multiply it times 1.5 and that gives you your cost per year. So are there any questions from the board before I go and uh, get rid of the presentation? Well, I, well, I don't need any more on the presentation. Will this be on our website? Um, it can be, yes. Yeah, I think that we have to put as much information out there as possible so that people understand the situation we're in. The only thing I would suggest is putting a negative in front of the numbers that are negative. I can do that. I can make them red. I can, we can do a negative red number and we do that a sounds red number. great. And we'll put FAQs up uh, by the end of the week so that, you know, it's not just the story and numbers, it's looking at some of the other questions that you know, we know we'll start to get. 
So, and I think to answer Joe's question, I hope that he can see now why we're asking for this levy. Um, and the levy itself is not gonna get us out of the hole. We have to continue to make cuts as well in addition to get the levy passed. Um, I can't even imagine what the cuts would look like if the levy doesn't pass, it would be horrible. Mike, what's multiply times 1.5? What, what's the 1.5? Oh, I was, uh, because I had gotten a call from a taxpayer who was rightfully upset based on the information he, he was provided. Um, he said, it's going to cost me over a thousand dollars for the levy because my house is worth $150,000. Um, because in the, in the Gazette, it said $699 per hundred thousand valuation. It was tax value, not market value. So that's why, um, I use that example of 150. Okay. So if you were $150,000 house would be about $367 a year. So Mike, I know that, you know, most districts pass an additional tax levy every five to six years. We didn't pass one for 28 years. Um, but when we passed that, we, we had projections about what our ending balances would be. And I know that in our last meeting, you talked about those, that when we campaigned for that levy, we said that our ending balances would be certain amounts. And, and I'm not asking for exact figures, but all part, we ended up better out, better off than we thought we would when we ran that last levy. So I know Joe had said, you know, something about whether we would run another levy or not. But when we ran the last levy, we predicted that was a preserve and protect levy that would only last us a certain period of time. And I know you talked about that last meeting that it would only, that money was only going to last us about four or five years. And it lasted us just about as long as we thought maybe a little bit more. Is that correct? Yeah. Give me one sec. And okay. So we, our forecast this year ended us with $43,550. The forecast that we issued right after the uh, levy had passed. So it would have been the fifth year is 2021, the fifth year, which was the fifth year after that levy, we projected to have $54,000. So five years of fluctuations and us watching the budget, we're within $11,000 of it. And keeping in mind each year we bring in um, 25, 26 million, we send out 25, 26 million. So I don't know how many decimal places you have to go to to figure out what our variance is. We are right on where we thought we would be at this point. I certainly would encourage, I, I'm not sure if, if this was planned too, but if uh, we put this on the website, like Michelle suggested, and I agree, I, I think all those reasons that you have given us that help make sense. Somebody can look at this, in other words, and say, okay, I, I see the figures, but I still want to know why. I, I think that's where Sean's reason of 28 years without a levy makes sense. Right. Inflation makes sense. Showing how millage passed, you know, years ago does not generate the same. I think all that simple stuff, which is really complex, but it's simple. It's simple enough for my mind to understand it helps explain facts of financial facts. So, I, you know, if, if you could create a slide that gives all those, I think that would be additionally very helpful. Well, what we might be able to do is since this meeting's being recorded, I can ask Joe Measle to take just this part of the meeting and post it separately. So they can not only hear the presentation, but they can hear the questions and the answers and the other explanation that isn't included in the slides. Another thing I think would be helpful, Mike, is Angela wrote a letter to the governor explaining all of the cuts that we've made for 20 years, it seemed like was, you know, all of these different things that had changed for our district over the years, you know, negatively, that all these things that we used to have that we don't have anymore, we're, we've cut and cut and cut and we did have a levy about five years ago that was passed that lasted us the almost the exact amount that we predicted it would. And yet here we are 
again, now because of even additional cuts. So I, I think that would be helpful too, because that puts in context all the efforts the district has made to reduce our expenditures to the best of our ability. I mean, there's not much left to cut. And you know, there's a lot of expenses that, that folks don't understand and I don't expect them to with special education and, and, and certain uh, expenditures, but it, it's just a lot that we've cut. And I don't know that people realize that because it happens slowly over time, over the course of decades. And it's just, it's a lot of cuts. You know, another suggestion, uh, again, about the process and the promotion of this is um, have Joe tape you, the treasurer, and you, the superintendent, and, you know, Angela, you ask the questions that you know the public is asking, and then, you know, let Mike respond to it and post that right on our school website. Okay. Is some of that. And then he can ask me the questions that get at the education side. Exactly. And maybe if, if, uh, if you need to revise it, that's fine, but maybe you could also, and maybe that's what you were just saying, uh, Sean, post the letter, make the letter public too. Would you want the governor? Yes. Sure. Yeah, anything and everything we can do to be transparent and clear, um, I think is helpful. All right, so we do have a motion and a second. We were in discussion on this levy resolution. Is there any other discussion before we take a roll call vote? Seeing none, roll call. Michael Howry? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Brian Horvath? Yes. Jean Sensi? Yes. John Douglas? Yes. Vote is 5 0. All right. Reports and recommendations of the treasurer. But right before you do that, I will point out there is another public session at the end in case Joe wanted to make any additional comments during the meeting. So we're ready for reports and recommendations of the treasurer. And I have uh, neither reports nor recommendations this evening. All right. Thank you. Reports of the administrative team. Okay, well, uh, I've got a few things. Um, first, uh, we're nearly halfway through the third quarter. I find that so hard to believe. Um, and we're in our third week of in-person instruction. And while we've had some positive cases crop up, uh, we're doing everything we can to keep uh, schools open. Um, most of our cases have been through the athletic realm and so we've been quarantining as directed by the Lake County General Health District and following their direction on every single case. Dave has a outstanding contact that he calls the minute I say, okay, uh, we've got this positive case, we need to start tracing it down and we go from there. Um, and I just have to say that you know, the, the staff and the students and um, administration are doing everything we can to keep our doors open for the kids. And the kids are happy to be there. They want to be there. So um, I just have to remind everybody that this is not the time to be lax in following those protocols. And it's going to take everyone, everybody's part to keep our doors open, um, you know, wearing the mask, sanitizing, uh, especially because we don't know much about the new variants yet. So uh, I do have to say that the second half of the year is fl flying by and we're starting to look at the year end events that we hope that we'll be able to uh, have them and um, We'll work with the health department to ensure what we do and what we plan is within those guidelines. Um, you know, spring events seem to crop up very quickly. Uh, National Honor Society selection is currently underway and their induction is planned for March 9th. Um, I have to say that I applaud the creativity and the flexibility of the advisors, Christina Hickman and Michelle Replogel because they're really working to plan a meaningful event for our students that are being inducted. Uh, 
And it will be different than what's normally been done in the last several years because it has to be with the pandemic, but you know, I think it will be just as meaningful. And I have to say, this was the last major event last year prior to the shutdown. So maybe National Honor Society this year will be a turning point of uh, positive energy and uh, something, you know, a turning point in this pandemic, we can only hope, right? So uh, our elementary students, they'll be selling, celebrating Valentine's Day next week, both virtually and in person. Uh, and I appreciate the co cooperation between Ms. Kriegmont and Mr. Mayor in planning uh, for those parties. Because again, what's the kids enjoy besides being in school with their friends and being there to learn is some of the sense of normalcy these things bring. And so at every opportunity that we can provide those op options, we're going to try and do it as safely as possible. Um, so with that, I do have an announcement. So as we look to graduation, it is with great pleasure that I announced tonight our valedictorians and salutatorians for the class of 2021. Our tri-valedictorians are Matthew Edward Dedich, Emma Ann Blake, and Nicholas Matthew Guerreri. Our co-salutatorians are Andrew Jordan Dalkey, Brian Allen Chaffee, Mark Edward Hybar, and Ashton Kenneth Keller. All of these students have a 4.5 and you know fish is so good about multiplying it out but a 4.5 or a little bit higher grade point average and what separates them so um that's a that's exciting that once again we have a large group of students who have achieved and uh again he's going to theme the speeches so the valedictorians will plan their speeches and the co-salutatorians will plan theirs. Um, and, you know, I know I've started to see schools talk about what they're gonna do for graduation. I think we've got a little bit of time in that planning. Um, as I've told Fish, I think it's safe to say that 2000 in the gym isn't going to be what we do, but we have a time, we have time to plan for what we do and provide a commencement ceremony for our class of 2021. Um, finally tonight, because this was a big, big part of my week last week, as most of you know, uh, I wanna pro provide an update regarding vaccinations. The clinic obviously that was scheduled for tomorrow was postponed because we found out Tuesday of last week that the governor was probably was going to tell schools when they had to get their vaccines. Um, and our county health department didn't have enough vaccine to pull together for school clinics. They have, they're doing a very large clinic um, this weekend and all of their vaccine had to go to that because it was already earmarked for that, for you know the people in the populations that have to receive it. Um, so we are scheduled now for February 25th in a very large uh, vaccine clinic at Re Riverside High School. Uh, I will be writing an update for the community regarding instruction for the 25th uh, and, and the day after. Uh, I do appreciate the work of our ESC superintendent who tried diligently to get us vaccines uh, for tomorrow and it just didn't happen. And I was disappointed like all our staff uh, that we weren't gonna be able to get those vaccines, but we are going to get them. And I will put more uh, details in my update Friday as, I, as those plans begin to take shape. But, um, you know, it's just, there's just not enough vaccine. In fact, clinics in other parts of the state they don't have enough vaccine to do like all the Akron teachers. They're gonna do 780 of the Akron teachers out of 3000 right now. So 
hopefully we're, we're hoping by the end of the month that there's enough vaccine to do all of our county without having to have anybody wait. And I will turn it over to Dave. Good evening, everybody. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk about our uh, district spelling bee, which took place a week ago, uh, Tuesday morning of the 26th. Um, it was a little bit different this year. Oh, this is the, um, you know, this this is uh, the spelling bee that ultimately feeds into the Scripps National Spelling Bee. So um, it would be great if one of our spellers could uh, continue down that path and end up spelling on ESPN for us to watch. Uh, in the districts, uh, the spelling bee is uh, for grades four through eight. And we had a number of spellers compete. I'll go through the list in a little bit. It was different this year. Uh, it was a COVID spelling bee uh, for sure. We were socially distanced across the stage. There was no microphone used. Uh, we were fearful of students walking up and spelling into a microphone. We didn't want them to have to spell with their mask on. Um, so we had them sitting at tables with a Chromebook in front of them and they pulled their mask off, spelled their word and put it back on when they remembered to do that. Uh, so that was, that was different, a little bit challenging. And our awards ceremony was touch free. We had a table, we had their awards, we called them up and they got pictures taken by their family. They were allowed to have two adults with them in the audience. And uh, instead of all of us kind of gathering together to celebrate their success, it was them alone on the stage getting their pictures taken. But uh, it, it was very nice. Um, we had 14 rounds. Uh, the winner was fifth grader Lucy Pitzinger and she's from South Elementary and her winning word was rallies. And our runner up uh, is Allison Gladwell. She's a sixth grader from Madison Middle School. So Lucy will be representing the Madison School District in the Lake County Spelling Bee. And that's going to take place on February 9th. And it is at uh, one of the buildings owned by the ESC of the Western Reserve. It's uh, Hale Road School in Painesville Township. So if I could, I'll just read off the, the students who rose to the top of their classes as spellers and um, represented the district in the Spelling Bee. Uh, from North Elementary in grade four, we had Declan Moore and Thomas Carroll was the alternate. Grade five was Killian Badoon and Allison Wargala. From South Elementary, grade four was Mason Radovanic and Jaron Burr. And grade five, our, our champion, Lucy Pitzinger, and uh, the alternate was Kaylin Bird. Grade six, we had a Addison Gladwell, who was our runner up and Noah Janchak. Grade seven was Luke Young and Scott Malik. And grade eight was Colin Kosick and Ryan Radkowski. Um, it's for a, a, a fifth grader or a fourth grader even to do real well in these and sometimes win these. So this year we had a fifth grader who will be representing us. Uh, it could be a sign of good things to come. So I, I think, I think all things considered and all the changes we made and took us out of our regular process, um, they did real well. Uh, they weren't thrown by it and, um, and we pulled it off. We were worried, but we did it. Dave, talk about uh, the extra prize our winner got. Oh, right, yes. Uh, so normally we have some refreshments uh, afterwards. This was another COVID, COVID alteration. We uh, got some cookies that were pre-wrapped from a bakery. The bakery is called the Pink Bandana Bakery. It's in Mentor. And uh, it was the place we could have find that we could afford <laughs> that would pre-wrap the cookies for us. So I got there at about 7 a.m. to pick up the cookies that morning. And she came out of the building, gave me the cookies, uh, a pink t-shirt and a $50 gift certificate for the family. So I thought that was really unexpected and very, very nice. And um, I think the, the winner really appreciated it. That was very nice. Very were nice. the cookies? <laughs> Fantastic. They were good. <laughs> Not that I tried them. Well, yeah. In fact, I, I've been talking to the National Honor Society people about using them for their induction ceremony that evening. Nice. So, yeah. Very nice. And that's all we have on reports tonight. Are you ready for our recommendations? 
Sure. Okay. Um, under the recommendations this evening, we're asking you to accept um, the following resignations. Uh, we're asking you to accept with regret the retirement resignation of Robert Peter Peterlin, Madison High School math teacher after 31 years of service to the district, effective the end of the 2021 school year. The, we are asking you to accept the retirement resignation also of Tim Willis, Madison High School physical education teacher after 30 years of service to the district effective at the end of this school year. We're asking you to accept the resignation of Debbie Magda, uh, nutrition services cashier at South Elementary School. Um, we're asking you to employ the following substitute teachers as approved by the Lake County Educational Service Center and or the Madison Local School District's Assistant Superintendent under a one-year limited substitute teacher contract for this school year, Justin Ransom. And to employ Justin Ransom as a building substitute at Madison High School at the rate of $100 per day, effective January 18th, 2021. And we're asking you to uh, employ the following certificated personnel under a one-year limited supplemental contract for the 2020-21 school year, beginning with Doug Thomas, MMS girls track coach, and ending with Nick Riley, MM MHS freshman baseball coach. We're asking you to employ the following non-certificated persons under a one-year limited personal service contract for the 2020-21 school year, beginning with Ken Ankrum, MHS assistant boys track coach and ending with Nick Mayer, MHS assistant boys tennis coach. We're asking you to approve uh, Andrea Unger as the nutrition services assistant manager at South Elementary for six and a half hours per day, effective January 25th, 2021. To approve Aaron Chambers as a custodian second shift at Madison Middle School. Actually, it's Madison High School, isn't it, Dave? Now, Aaron oh. is at the middle school. Okay, the middle school mm -hmm. for eight hours per day at a um, effective February 16th, 2021, and approve Sean Edison as a custodian, second shift at Madison High School for eight hours per day, effective February 12th, 2021. And that's the personnel motion this evening. I'll move. Second. second. Any discussion? I just want to say thank you to Bob Peterlin and Tim Willis for their years of service to the district. They will be missed. Thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call. Michelle Hayes. She's muted. She's on yes. The thank you. Brian Horvath? Yes. Dean Sensi? Yes. John Douglas? Yes. Michael Howry? Yes. Vote is 5 0. Okay, and I have two items on the consent calendar this evening um, to approve a contract between the Madison Local School District and Frontline Education to provide applicant tracking um, effective March 1st, 2021 through February 28th, 2022. And then um, to approve Bo Ransom as a volunteer Madison Middle School seventh grade wrestling coach for the 2020-21 school year. I'll move. A second. Any discussion? Yeah, just real quick, like, could you explain, uh, Superintendent, what is applicant tracking? Um, it's how we, if we, when we have needs for, um, personnel and teachers and aides, we post jobs and it goes to a central um, gotcha. database. Okay. Everything's online these days. Okay. Any other discussion? Roll call. Brian Horvath? Yes. Dean Sensi? Yes. John Douglas? Yes. Michael Howry? Yes. Bell Hayes? Yes. Vote is 5 0. All right, we'll now open the second public participation portion of tonight. This is on any item. Anyone wishing to address the board may do so. 
You would have five minutes. Uh, please state your name and address, please. So everybody should have the opportunity to unmute themselves. Can I start talking now? <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Okay. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that uh, one of the things you said about the uh, the school district, uh, you haven't had any uh, raises for your staff and everything. Well, I want to tell you, I've been re retired for almost 18 years, and I haven't had any raise anywhere. I'm living on a fixed income. And I, mean, I know there are many, many, many more people just like me living on a fixed income. Now, wh where do you think we're going to get all this money to for pay for these levies? I mean, you know, you got to have some consideration for the for the people out here that you know are just making it. I mean, I, I I'm fortunate enough I can I can afford my pills and all that, but there are people out there that can't afford it. I mean, there, there's uh, they're going to uh, the uh, uh, centers to get food and everything. I mean. I don't know what you're going to have to do, but it's going to be have to be radical. It's going to have to you're going to have to go to, I don't know, go to the, your staff and ask them to take pay cuts. Something I don't know. Are all the other school districts in the same thing as this? Are, are all the other districts going to start going to start asking for for more money? I mean, it's got to stop somewhere. I don't know. If you look at the other area districts, most districts do go to the ballot far more than we do, actually. So they have not gone the extensive amount of time that we have without passing levies. Yeah. And at the last meeting, I showed the graph, which is the same graph I show every year. We're the second lowest district in Lake County when it comes to taxing our taxpayers for the schools. And what are we in the state, Mike? Um, we are, well, as far as per pupil expenditures, we're definitely under the lowest 100 out of 60, 607. I think we're closer to 50th lowest in the state. So we're already scraping to get by. And as far as income, are we like, I think around 16 in the state? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we yeah. are. We're down as, as far as uh, millage on our taxpayers, as far as expenditures per pupil, as far as revenue per pupil. You know, we're one of the lowest. We are second lowest in Lake County. And as far as those other two, we're one of the lowest in the state. Yeah. So basically, for income wise, if we're number 16 in the state, that's 16 from the bottom, not 16 from the top. You have over 600 districts that bring in more money than what Madison does. Taxes don't that. And just to comment on what Michelle's saying, that's real simple math. That's add up every dollar you get. Doesn't matter whether it's federal dollars, state dollars, local property tax dollars, add it all up, divide it by the number of students you have. And out of 605 some school districts, we're number 16 from the lowest. We, we are an extremely poor school district. When you hear poor school districts, you think of East Cleveland or those sort of inner city school districts. That's not the case. That's us. And, you know, I can't refute anything that Joe's saying. I mean, you know, folks are on fixed incomes and it's difficult for them. And so that's a reality. But also a reality is that we're a very, very poor school district. And people just don't realize it because we're out here in the country and folks don't see it that way. But that's that's fact. And just to make sure the numbers are right, we're 39th lowest out of 607 revenue per pupil and 79th lowest out of 607 for expenditures per pupil. Okay, so what happens when this levy comes up and it fails? What happens then? Are we gonna go into a default? Let's go into default, heck on, let the state take it. I, I don't want that for our students. I absolutely don't want that for our students. Um, honestly, if it fails, not only will we have to make cuts, but we will probably turn around and go right back on the ballot again. Well, then what if it fails again? I mean, this, you've reached a point of return, you know, it's got to stop somewhere. 
you can't go to the well or keep taking water out and, and eventually there's going to be no water left. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. Well, it's certainly possible that if we fail to pass any additional levies, we have to make deep, deep, significant cuts that will provide um, barely essential education to our students. And it's possible that we could go into state receivership and the state would have to take it over. That is a possibility. We're hoping to avoid that. And, you know, we didn't ask for this. We didn't ask to get, you know, for our funds to be cut even further. Um, the way the state distributes their funding for education makes no sense. Um, there are districts that get more money than we do and they're not in our situation. So, I mean, I understand your, your point, uh, Joe, I really do. You know, I own three parcels in Madison, pay property taxes on three parcels, not just the one I live on. I own two others, my parents' house, they're elderly, pay their property taxes. So I understand, I understand exactly where you're coming from. So I'm, I'm not, not going to argue your point at all. I, I'm just going to tell you that the schools have cut and cut and cut. We've not kept up with our share as taxpayers of, you know, to support our schools. And so we're in a bad situation, Yeah. especially when we got cut more. So I understand. I, I do understand your point. Well, right now, right now, my taxes are almost a quarter of what my, my uh, income from my, my job are. I mean, not, not counting, I, you know, social security and that stuff, but what, what I get from my job. I mean, it, it's, it's frightening. It really is. I mean, you stop, I mean, you know, everything is going up in price. Everything's going up in price. And then, you know, then you lay this on us, you know, and it's like, good Lord. What, what, I mean, I'm up paying over $6,000 a year in taxes. You know, tomorrow, Joe, I, uh, tomorrow at 11 o'clock, as a matter of fact, we have someone coming to the house, um, because we are refinancing the house and we're refinancing it for another 30 years. And it's so that I can continue to afford to stay in my house. So I understand what you're saying. I, 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 we're not uh, rich, wealthy people over here that aren't you know, equally as, uh, as affected by you know, these things as you are. She's still young, she can still work. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I mean, it seems to me that if we have to make cuts, you know, in our in our uh, in our schools and everything, we 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 must have programs there that we don't don't really really need. We get down to the state basics, to what the state says that we have to have. We get down to that, and then we can go from there. But but uh, I don't know. I mean. I, I don't think we, we can compare ourselves to some place, some place like Perry, which you know they get much taxes they need from the well they did at least from the uh, uh, power plant there, but uh, I don't think we should compare ourselves to every, every districts like there, there's there's people there and like I don't know Gates Mills and stuff like that. They, these are uh, communities that have been established for years and years and years, and they, they've kept their their programs. At a, at a certain level, but it seemed, no. like, it seemed like we're trying to catch up to these people. And, and I, I don't think we should be doing anything like that. Well, Joe, we've, we've actually cut a lot of programs in my time in this district. And so it's not that we offer, you know, all sorts of different opportunities for our, our students. When I started here, in 2003, we had three different foreign languages we offered. We're just down to Spanish. And we have to offer that. That's one of those things that is in, uh, part of what kids need for college. Um, so we have, we have cut and we do offer pretty much what's required uh, as far as uh, opportunities for our students. We don't have a lot of fluff. See, well, I think we shot, shot ourselves in a foot years ago when we did away with all the, uh, the things like uh, wood shop and metal shop and things shop. like that. And we just completely just took that program and just scrapped it. I mean, we're, we're, we're acting like everybody has to go to college and it's not the case. I mean, it's, they're, they're just saying right now that there's just too many people going to college, really. 
I mean, the, all this world doesn't have to be educated to the nth degree. We have to have someone out there that works with their hands and, and does a job that way, you know? Yeah, as Angela said, we do still have our wood shop class. Um, it remains to be seen if we're gonna be able to keep that, but um, we do still have it at this time. Um, we have um, a cooking class at this time. Um, so we have basic skills classes, but um, those may or may not be things that we'll and be where able to you brought, And where we, Michelle, where we had three of those uh, family consumer science teachers, we now have one. Yes. And we did used to have metals. We no longer have metals anymore. It's just down to wood shop. We had three industrial tech teachers. We have one. So we have, you know, we, we have cut quite a bit. All right. So uh, I, you know, I now want to open up the public participation portion to anyone else wishing to address the board. All right, seeing none. Moving on, we do have a need for executive session. Uh, so we would be looking for a motion to move into executive session for the purpose of the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of public employees or regulated individuals. And number three. And conferences with an attorney concerning disputes involving pending or imminent court action. Move. I'll second. Any discussion? We do not plan to take any action when we return from executive session. We will just move into adjournment. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Dean Sensi? Yes. Don Douglas? Yes. Michael Howry? Yes. Del Hayes? Yes. Brian Horvath? Yes. Vote is 5 0. All right, we stand in adjournment. I'm going to step away for just a moment. Gretchen.